Hello ladies, men, and non-binary friends. Before we actually get into the video, I want to speak on the rape allegations against Danny Masterson that are currently being seen in court. I stand with the victims. This man is definitely guilty. He even admitted to assaulting one of these women while she was unconscious. I don't want anyone to think that I'm defending this man just because I'm talking about one of his roles in a positive light. My feelings about Stephen Hyde's character do not reflect my feelings about Danny Masterson as a person. This man needs to self-reflect. He needs to apologize to these women and he needs to face punishment for what he's done, in my opinion. I'll be donating the first $50 this video makes to Rain as well as my own donation of $50 before this video is posted. I'll leave a link in the description if any of you are interested in donating as well. Thank you so much for listening. Sorry to start off the video so bleak. <laughs> I just don't want anyone to get the wrong impression. I love you all. Enjoy the video. Yeah! Hello ladies, men, and non-binary friends, and welcome back to my kingdom. All right. I'm gonna be completely honest here. I haven't even thought about this show in probably like five years. I got a cute compilation of Hyde and Jackie clips recommended to me on YouTube recently. And for the past 72 hours, I have been absolutely stewing over the fact that the final season of that 70s show is just criminally bad, an abomination. And it's consuming my life. I really woke up and chose violence today. I was a huge fan of the show growing up. In the garage sale episode where Hyde makes special brownies and the parents accidentally eat them is perhaps my favorite episode in sitcom history. I could always watch this with my family and friends and get a laugh out of people. Not to mention, what a theme song. I don't think it would be possible for them to disappoint me more unless they turned Kitty into a serial killer and just had her murder everybody in the final episode. Actually, no, that would be worse. That would be, that would be worse. Right? There's so much that I love about the first five seasons or so. And I would say after that, it begins to fall off, not only due to the repetition and recycling of jokes, but because the writers just don't seem to really care about the characters anymore. Most of the developments in the story seem to be included merely for the sake of shock value or drama or to subvert expectations, I guess. If I were to include everything that frustrated me about this final season, it would take too long. I just simply don't have the time. So today we're going to talk about the biggest heartbreak of the That 70s Show fandom, the failed relationship of Stephen Hyde and Jackie Burkhart. I would argue that the ending of this relationship is the most intense fury in the 70s Show fandom. It only took me 10 minutes to find all of these posts complaining about it. People are still really mad. <laughs> By poorly ending this relationship, we are heartbroken as an audience because these two characters genuinely seem to make each other happy, and it pretty much retcons any growth that Hyde and Jackie had as people. It really seems like the decision to split them up was just to cause more drama and keep the show interesting, when in actuality it just abandoned the only authentic part of the show that was left. In the first two seasons of the show, we witness Jackie's toxic relationship with Michael Kelso. He's constantly objectifying her, talking about other girls, and cheating on her. Like a lot, like a frustrating amount. We see her forgive him over and over again, and these betrayals are actually what humanized Jackie in the show. She initially comes off as this spoiled princess trying to hang out with her boyfriend's crew without really having anything in common with them. They joke about her outspoken nature, her attitude, and her incredibly privileged upbringing. But seeing Kelso break her heart is the first time we actually feel bad for her. This kind of helps her transition into a less hateable character and fully acclimate to the group. Kelso and Jackie's relationship is tumultuous and unhealthy, but they are involved with each other on and off for about four seasons. It ultimately ends with Kelso going to California to fool around with beach girls and Jackie in Wisconsin picking up the pieces of yet another heartbreak. Then season five rolls around. Eric, Donna, and Kelso are all in California and Hyde and Jackie are left to their own devices all summer in Point Place. This is when they start hooking up initially out of boredom and their relationship progresses from there. I will say there are a few really cute moments between Jackie and Hyde in the earlier seasons, and it's clear that Hyde cares for Jackie, and vice versa. Hyde takes her to the school dance after Kelso dumps her, he gets her a corsage and everything. Jackie takes Hyde shopping to get him new boots, and they even go on a date. However, I'm not trying to say that this was the writers like hinting at their relationship. I honestly don't think that they planned any of this. Personally, I just believe that they were trying to keep their options open in terms of storytelling, but they did eventually end up moving forward with the relationship, and I can't really complain about that. Simply put, these two care about each other. They are so opposite on practically everything that they're able to recognize and mellow out the extremities in each other. Honestly, I feel the same way about the Frenemies podcast. I wasn't really a fan of Ethan or Trisha before the show, but 
I like that they're so different and that they aren't afraid to be honest with each other. They call each other out on bad behavior and when they say problematic things. And I definitely feel like there's a similar relationship between Jackie and Hyde. They're both incredibly honest, stubborn, and proud over entirely different things. Early on in their relationship, it's funny to see the exchanges between them because most of the things that they're fighting about are incredibly trivial. But when they actually fight, it's often because they've hurt the other person and they want to make amends. This is a learning curve for both of them. There's an episode that starts out with Jackie begging Steven to shave off his beard, telling him that it feels like making out with a carpet and that she wants to see his clean shaven face. Hyde, being the proud man that he is, says, no, I'm gonna keep it, you can't tell me what to do. Later on in the episode, Jackie's father is sent to jail for embezzling funds. Hyde starts cracking jokes because that's what would make him feel better. Unfortunately, that's not what Jackie needs and he feels terrible for making things worse. Hyde is not someone who's ever been emotional or good at saying the right thing, but he does wanna do something to make her feel better. So he shaves his beard, he apologizes, he gives her hugs and kisses and she's super happy about it. Already the healthiest relationship that she's ever had. This is, of course, just one example, but there's so many instances of them being so cute. When Jackie's mother abandons her, Hyde agrees to let Jackie stay with him in secret, not only to protect her and make her feel safe, but to keep her situation private because she feels embarrassed by the whole situation and doesn't want anyone else to know. Jackie helps Steven reconnect with his real dad and gives him the kick in the butt he needs to actually reach out to him. This ends up being immensely rewarding and a huge part of Hyde's adult life. Anyway, I could go on and on, but let's talk about why this relationship became such an important part of the show. In my opinion, in the later seasons of the show, Jackie and Hyde's relationship acts as the beating heart. We don't really see any of the other characters progress or develop in any way. They're all pretty stagnant after graduation, which keeps the show going, but it's just because they're all f***ing around in their hometown still, which is so boring, like we've seen this already. They've already graduated from high school and it's not really cute for them to be bums anymore. We don't see any of the drive or ambition in these characters that we saw in earlier seasons. A huge part of Donna's character was her dedication to her independence and that's just kind of abandoned. The only characters that are actively building a life for themselves are Jackie and Hyde, which is wildly ironic because for the entire show, Hyde has been the burnout stoner and Jackie has been the spoiled princess who never really wanted to do anything herself. Writers, <laughs> if you wanted to completely bail on these other characters for whatever reason, fine. But making sure that Jackie and Hyde's arc remains coherent should have been your top priority because these were the only two characters with any real direction in the show. If this relationship hadn't been explored and we just watched these high school grads spiral for another four years, I don't think I would have been able to keep watching. Jackie and Hyde were a huge part of why these later seasons were bearable. The relationship between Jackie and Hyde comes to a fiery end when Jackie leaves for Chicago without Steven because she asked him if he would marry her and he couldn't give her an answer. Jackie decides that she can't stay in Point Place anymore and she can't stay with Steven if they don't have a future together. I mean, who she thinks she is giving me an ultimatum? So marry me or moving to Chicago? And then she takes off before I even give her an answer. Well, what's the big deal, man? I mean, she pretty much let you off the hook. <laughs> What? No. Oh my god, you were gonna marry her. <laughs> Jackie, you're everything this poor little husband boy. Oh my god, I really am. Oh my god. <laughs> loud girls in Chicago. Hey, that's why you're sad, man. You love loud girl. <laughs> Maybe I do. Steven eventually goes after Jackie and meets her in Chicago to propose. And f naked Kelso comes in the room. After her breakup with Steven, she immediately defaults back to Kelso and we see all of Jackie's growth unravel in one foul swoop of terrible writing. And it doesn't even go anywhere. Steven is so obviously heartbroken and he heads back to Point Place, but in the next season, so does Jackie. So she didn't actually take the job in Chicago, which means they can get back together, right? Right? Nope, there's no real resolution. They're just mean to each other for another season. It's honestly so heartbreaking. If the writers were like, okay, Jackie and Kelso, they've been through so much, they have to end up together because they just, they just can't shake their feelings for one another. I guess that would have been fine, toxic and stupid, but at least it would have made that breakup make sense. But it doesn't even lead to anything. And then they set her up with Fez in like the second to last episode. Are you kidding me? A character that Jackie has shown absolutely no interest in for seven years. What? <laughs> it truly hurts me. It truly hurts me because it's like, you had it on a silver platter. You had the perfect ending on a silver platter and you gave it up for the drama. I'm like so beyond. 
It makes me sick. It makes it makes me sick. <laughs> Perdón. All these years later, this decision to separate these two makes even less sense to me. I'm not sure what these writers were thinking, and like I said, it's one of the many, many, many reasons why this final season failed. Drew Gooden has a really great video about shows that overstay their welcome, and he cites that 70s show as a prime example, so feel free to check that out after this video. Don't be supporting other creators on my time, how dare you? Probably the best relationship that you could be a part of is one where you both make each other better. This could be a romantic partnership, a friendship, a family relationship, but I think we can all agree that being in a relationship that's not only mutually beneficial, but one where you can both grow is ideal. When we first see Hyde and Jackie's relationship, it's jarring and funny and shocking. <laughs> what the hell? Oh my God. I'm blind. <laughs> We don't think it's gonna last. Eric, Donna, Fez, and even Jackie and Hyde describe it as creepy and unnatural. And looking on it from the outside, it does seem rather strange. You could chalk it up to the whole opposites attract phenomenon, but I think it's so much more than that. Hyde and Jackie are both incredibly flawed individuals. I want to be careful here because if you know that you're a flawed individual, I'm not saying you should seek out other flawed individuals to balance you out or fix you. That's not the point I'm trying to make. <laughs> This entire relationship developed kind of on accident and grew into something so beautiful. This is not a guaranteed method of happiness, but I think that there's something really charming about how healthy their relationship is, despite them both being incredibly flawed people. There's no deep-seated judgment or resentment of each other's flaws because Jackie and Hyde are wildly aware of what other people see them as. For Jackie, it's a loudmouth spoiled princess, and for Hyde, it's a sarcastic burnout stoner. Hyde is patient with Jackie because he knows that she is a little shallow and that she likes things like going to school dances and wearing pretty dresses. If you could just no. see that this is something that's really no. important to me, then you'd understand no. that as my boyfriend, no. you should go, fine. He. Fine. Okay. Aww. Steven, for the Christmas Eve no. dance, what do you think about this no. guy? Maybe this jacket? No. How about a blade? No. Fine. Polo? Fine. Okay. <laughs> Jackie is understanding that Hyde is not the biggest fan of large romantic gestures or formality, so she acclimates to his scruffy charm. And second of all, you're right, I am cheap. Well, you, you better quit it because I like to get stuff. <laughs> Especially shiny stuff. Did you settle for a cheeseburger wrapped in tinfoil? Well, for you I will, but just know that I'm really lowering my standards. That makes two of us. <laughs> it's really sweet. And these little compromises and gestures of goodwill are a huge reason why this relationship is so beautiful. In this relationship, they're able to shed their personas and just love each other as people. Without compromising what's important to them, they're just making space for what the other person thinks is important too. They are both fiercely loyal and ready to fire back at anyone who insults or hurts the other person. This is also the first time we see Hyde and Jackie really care for someone other than themselves. They allow each other to open up more emotionally and engage with each other's softer sides. So from now on, if I want you to do something, I'll ask first. Well, I Which, just... I'm talking! <gasps> I am so sorry, there I go again. Would you like to go with me to the Girl Scout alumni pancake breakfast? Jackie, I'd rather put on a dress and slow dance with Kelso on Soul Train. But since you asked nicely, I'll go. That 70s show will always be a nostalgic show for me. It's really easy to enjoy. I'm a huge fan of the over-the-top bits. Like most of the 70s show fandom, I choose to believe that the 8th season just doesn't exist and that Hyde proposed to Jackie like he planned at the end of season 7. That's just how I'm choosing to live my life and I'm much happier this way. That's all I have for you today. I hope you enjoyed this more intimate video on Jackie and Hyde. I always hesitate to get in front of the camera, but I think I look pretty good today. I feel pretty good about this. I think this is going to edit well. <laughs> Let me know what you think about this relationship. Let me know what you think about this show. As always, I would love to hear your thoughts. Thank you so much for watching. Take care of yourselves. Bye.